But this is the first time I've ever heard that there's a need to condemn. And say, yes, but of course they're suffering, but first we need to condemn. Are we out of our minds condemning the resistance of people who are being oppressed and killed, subjected to genocide for 75 years? Are we out of our minds? Are we out of our minds? Are we outside of our minds? When we let this ridiculous narrative take hold and spread and then participate in it, nodding our heads like sheep. Oh, and by the way, yes, there is a genocide going on and it's terrible. But first we have to condemn the Palestinians who dare to stand up. Palestinians who have shown an ability to sacrifice and amounts of courage that, as far as I can remember, are unprecedented facing this horrific, horrific oppression. But what are we really talking about? Again, we've heard lists and lists and lists of crimes committed by the state of Israel, lists and lists of crimes against humanity. And there's always seems to me like there's a little bit of a sense of surprise, a little bit of shock, a little bit as though this was somehow not predictable. What we are seeing now in Gaza was not only predictable, it was preventable. And we did not prevent it. The previous massacre in Gaza was predictable too, and that was not prevented. And we can go on and on and on and on back 75 years. Because what could possibly be expected from an apartheid regime established after a massive campaign, open massive campaign of ethnic cleansing, massacres, and the beginning of a genocide that is still going on today? What could possibly be expected? That was the founding moment of the state of Israel. Close to a million people forced out of their land. God knows how many were massacred. And that was the beginning. That was, 19, that was 1948. So now we're shocked. All these lists and lists and lists and lists. There's nothing new about them. Except this time the numbers are higher. This time the numbers are, you know, even by Israeli standards, it is shocking. But this was predictable and this was preventable. And every time something happens, we rise, we protest, we demand, and we forget. Instead of standing there and demanding an end, an absolute end to the oppression and the killing of Palestinians, an end to it, not a ceasefire to it, an end to it, a political solution that will guarantee the lives, the security, the safety of Palestinians, that has never been discussed. I don't recall it ever being discussed that guarantees need to be put in place. Guarantees need to be put in place for the life and security and the safety of Palestinians because Palestinians have been living in a state of terror for 75 years. Not just now, but for 75 years living in a state of terror, whether they're in the West Bank, whether they're in the Gaza Strip, whether they're citizens of the state of Israel or so-called citizens. They have been living in a state of terror, and they still do today. Granted, the level of terror has increased since October the 7th.